Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's current affairs class, which will cover your current affairs of August 3rd and August 4th. So let's move ahead, but let me inform you that we have launched the live classes for RBI and SEBI in Nabat. So if you want to know more about the courses, you can do so on the application as well as on the uh, website of ours. And this is the crash course for Nabat. Okay. So the very first question that we have in front of us is what is the approximate outlay of power sectors revamped re, uh, distribution sector scheme for 2021 to 2022 to 25 to 26. So here rupees 3 lakh crore is the right answer. Now the exact amount is rupees 3 lakh 3758 crore rupees however this amount is very uh, you can say difficult to remember and the chances of this exact amount being asked at the examination is also very meek so here you can just remember that 3 lakh 3.03 lakhs lakh crores were the uh, was the uh, budget of this scheme for five years that is fi22 to fi26 now what is the purpose the purpose of this scheme is very clear from its name itself that is to revamp the power sector we know that the distribution companies uh, are facing a great loss in india they are not able to generate revenues that is why they are not able to pay back to the generating companies the electricity generating companies and this is how the entire power distribution sector is facing crisis so in order to revamp that the ministry of power has launched this scheme now one more scheme is there that is uday scheme for the uh, for revamping the power sector only and for uh, you can say for minimizing or mitigating the losses of the distribution companies the uday scheme was launched now it is your responsibility to tell me the year in which uday was launched and secondly the full form of uday now apart from this the ministry of power has also proposed to provide 25 crore smart prepaid meters to consumers all over the country so that the theft on the electricity bill that the consumers do that can be prevented Okay, the estimated capacity under the, under the national solar rooftop program is rupees four, sorry, is 4,000 megawatt. And this is an additional information. Now guys, apart from the launch of this scheme, foundation stones for various green energy projects of NTPC were also launched. So this is again a separate news, but I have just provided it here so that you can uh, join the efforts that are being taken in the field of the energy okay so foundation stone of uh, the various green projects that are launched by ntpc are first is ramagundam floating solar project in telangana now this project is operational okay so the foundation stone for this has not been launched it is operational second is second is 90 2 megawatt Kayam Kulam floating solar power project in Kerala. Now its foundation stone was uh, laid down. Then 375 megawatt of Nok solar power uh, solar project in Rajasthan. Green hydrogen mobility project in Leh. And Kavas green hydrogen blending with natural gas project in Gujarat. So all of these projects are being run by NTPC. Do remember the projects and their locations. Moving ahead. Which of the following has been chosen as the craft village under the linking textile with tourism initiative? So here you have Vadach, Raghu, Raghu Rajpur, Anagudi, Naina, Naini and all of the above. So here option E, all of the above is the right answer. Now what has happened? First of all, do pay attention to this thing that the Ministry of Textile is running this scheme that is the linking textile with tourism initiative. So it is basically an initiative wherein the tourism in the craft rich villages is promoted. Okay, so here we are hitting two targets with one stone that is promoting the tourism at the same time promoting the crafts as well. So here eight village, uh, eight craft villages have been selected for uh, under the linking textile with tourism initiative. Now these eight villages are here. Raghu Rajpur from Odisha, Tirupati from Andhra Pradesh, Badaj from Gujarat, Naini from Uttar Pradesh, Anagundi from uh, Karnataka, Mahabalipuram from Tamil Nadu, Taj Ganj from uh, Uttar Pradesh and Amer from Rajasthan. 
the craft villages will promote handicrafts as a visible and remunerative livelihood option for the artisans in the clusters thereby safeguarding the country's rich artisanal heritage okay so it's very basic in nature that is to boost the livelihood options when the tourists come in the craft villages obviously uh, the chances of uh, the crafts reaching to a wider audience increases so that is the basic idea now the third question is which state has signed a tripartite a tripartite MOU with Niti Aayog and reach to teach foundation for a large scale transformation in school education. So here Arunachal Pradesh is the right answer. The basic idea behind this partnership is to create uh, basically to enhance the scope of education in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. It is going to operate or this MOU is there for three years 2022 to 25 and they are going to enhance the learning outcomes of the students okay in the 3000 approximately 3000 government schools moving ahead which countries have collaborated to create an international semiconductor research hub to establish a secure source of vital components so here usa and japan both of them have collaborated to create this international semiconductor research hub now, apart from this, US has also taken another step to boost its semiconductor supply and that step is the Chips and Science Bill. So, USA has uh, passed this bill to provide subsidies to the semiconductor manufacturing companies in USA and subsidies would be worth $280 billion. Chips stand for creating helpful incentives to produce semiconductors. Moving ahead, how many UPI transactions were recorded in July 2022? So, 6 billion, over 6 billion, I would say, UPI transactions were recorded. Now, this question is important from two perspectives. First is that it is the very recent UPI data. Therefore, there are high chances that in the examination, this data can be asked because the UPI transactions occurred in the month of August. The data for that will be released approximately in the 15 days of September and your examination is on September 7th. So the latest UPI transaction data is of July. Therefore, high chances are there that they can ask you this monthly data as well. Now, secondly, the importance of this uh, data is that the UPI uh, transactions in the month of July were the highest so far since the inception of UPI. Okay, so the worth of uh, the transactions was rupees 10.62 trillion. Moving ahead, what is the score of RBI's financial inclusion index as of March 2022? So it is 56.4. Financial inclusion index has been released by RBI to check the extent of financial inclusion in India. So it is 56.4 out of 100. The score is 56.4 uh, as of March 2022. And in March 2021, the score was 53.9. Now here we have the uh, parameters on which the index is prepared. So first parameter is excess. 35% weightage is given to the excess. Then usage, 45% excess. Quality, 20% excess. Uh, sorry. Excess uh, is the first parameter. 35% weightage. Usage is the second parameter. 45% weightage. And quality is the third parameter with 20% weightage. Now guys, the index has 97 indicators and apart from this, you don't have to know anything else from this index from your exam perspective. Moving ahead, when is the Muslim Women's Rights Day observed? So it is observed on August 1st. Triple Talaq bill was passed on August 1st only and uh, was enacted on August 1st and from then onwards, we are celebrating August 1st as the Muslim Women's Rights Day. Which state's police has received President's colors in recognition of its commend commendable service and many achievements? So it is Tamil Nadu. The basic purpose of it is to recognize the efforts made by the Tamil Nadu police. Which team has won the UEFA Women's European Championship? So here, guys, England is the right answer. England has won this by defeating Germany. Which company is supporting the responsible AI for youth? 2022 campaign so it is being supported by intel india so ministry of electronics and it has basically uh, celebrated 
the eight years of my government initiative and during that event only the responsible ai for youth 2020 uh, scheme was also launched the basic purpose of it is to create awareness about ai among the youth or young generation so this responsible ai for youth is a joint initiative of national e governance division of the ministry of electronics and your intel india and ministry of education so this program is open to all the school students who are studying in class 8 to 12 to foster a deep understanding of ai tech and encourage youngsters to develop human centric uh, ai tools so that is the basic idea so here guys this video ends i hope that you have enjoyed the content that i have provided you today thank you so much for watching this video good day